Hey everybody, welcome to Auto Scholar with Mr. B. I'm Mr. B and today we have this 1999 Volkswagen Jetta. It has the two liter gasoline engine in it, automatic transmission, and we're having an AC issue with it. The AC is not cooling. I've already diagnosed it, but I'm gonna show you guys how I diagnosed it and also how to replace the part that is acting up. So this car right here is a 134A system. Uh, the AC compressor is uh, fairly easy to get to. We only have to move a couple of things to get to, but we have found that the AC compressor has failed and it has failed in a way to where the compressor is still running. So we have enough refrigerant in the system to run the compressor. However, it's not building up enough compression to actually cool the vehicle. So we have this compressor, the pressures are off, obviously, and it is going to affect the way that the car cools because there's not enough pressure differential between the low side and the high side. How an air conditioning system works is the low side has to be a certain pressure away from the high side. That way the pressure differential between the low and high side is actually what cools the vehicle. So if your compressor fails, your high side will be too low and your low side will be too high. And this is what we have on this car. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this camera over here to our AC machine. I'm gonna show you the gauges and I'll show you what the compressor is doing. Uh, if you can, give me a like on this video and subscribe to the channel, Auto Scholar with Mr. B. Okay, so this is our high side and low side. This is our Robin Air machine. Uh, really good machine, highly recommended. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on because we're gonna need to pull the refrigerant down. But you see our high side, our compressor is engaged. I heard it snap on. Our clutch is engaged. Everything's working like it should electronically on this car. However, we see the pressure differential here. We're at a little over a hundred with the temperature and everything the way it is today. We should see this, you know, 175 to 200 range. And so it's at a hundred. And our low side right here, where we should be 40, 45. And we're at about 87, 87, 88 PSI. So these, these right here are too close together. We're gonna wanna see these go this way. Okay, so basically that's telling me that the AC compressor is not compressing enough to warrant any cooling going on in the car. Okay, so we need an AC compressor. First thing we are going to do is I'm going to shut the vehicle off and go ahead and discharge this system with this machine. And you need to make sure whenever you're doing a diagnostic like this that your AC has the correct amount of refrigerant in it. It may be too high or too low. It can cause some cooling issues as well. And you have a good set of gauges to actually gauge what's going on with the vehicle. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do again is to recover the refrigerant. You definitely don't want this just to, uh, you don't wanna vent this into the atmosphere. And I'm gonna get this going and I'm gonna start the tear down of this process. First things first, we're gonna have to remove the alternator. So go ahead and disconnect the negative side of the battery cable. That's first step. Okay, our next step is going to be removal of the um, serpentine belt. So I've got a readout right here of how the serpentine belt runs. So. If you need this, just pause and write it down. Here's your tensioner. Here's your alternator, which we'll be removing to get down to your compressor. There's your power steering pump and your crankshaft here. So this is a double-sided belt, really easy to remove, a little bit harder to put on than it is to take off. All right, next thing we have to do is remove the serpentine belt. This is that double-sided belt that I was just showing you guys. And right here, is a little lug that hangs off of this spring-loaded tensioner. Now this, this tensioner does have some tension on it, okay? So it will spring back and, and, and hurt you. You gotta be careful. Uh, so I get either a 5 8 or a 16 millimeter wrench and I will open and wrench. And I grab it here and I press down and you can get as much leverage as you need to go ahead and get that belt off. It comes right off. Just be careful when you're springing it back. You don't wanna send this wrench through your windshield. Uh, and then the belt, you can kind of just let fall to the ground and get it out of your way. Next thing that we're gonna to have to do is we're gonna to have to take off the tensioner. Right here you have three 13 millimeter bolts. Go ahead and get those out. Okay, 
got the 313s to come out of here. This will just come down and out. And here's your tensioner here. Now's a good time to replace your belt tensioner if you need to. Now we're gonna be working on the alternator. And so you have a 13 millimeter that's back here that holds the alternator cable on. You need to make sure your battery's undone first. And you have this little connector right here. Push it in, push the tab, pull out. It should be just a single wire on this car. Some cars have two wires. And you have your 13 down there. I have a whole video on the alternator on this car. I'll link it. But right now I'm just gonna kind of breeze through this. So, cable will come off. All right, now we have to take the bolts for the alternator off. We have one here and one down there, two bolts. Should be 13s. Should be a little tight at first and they'll loosen right up. And the alternator will fall free. Pull this off. There is a little eight millimeter bolt down here that holds this wiring harness on. You get a little wrench for that. Let me move the camera so you can see it. Here is that little eight millimeter right here. It just holds this harness on. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen it. I just wanted to show you guys where it's at. Uh, but it comes right off. So once you got that bolt off, this will just come right out. And now you have all the room in the world to remove this compressor right here. So you should have a 16 millimeter bolt at the top and one kind of at the bottom towards the engine. And you have a plug for your compressor. And get this out of the way here. Your plug is a little two-prong plug. Let's see if I can get the camera to show you guys. You have a two-prong plug back here, right there. And uh, you just squeeze the prongs and it comes out. And you have a bolt back there that holds these lines on. Let's see, these lines on right here is an Allen head bolt. You have two of them. You have two lines. You have to take those off as well. You may have to reach underneath the car to get that. Um, here, I'll see you here in a minute. Sorry for the focus issues. Okay guys, I just wanted to show you, I went ahead and took the six millimeter bolts off right here and here. Depending on what tool you have, you may have to get them from the bottom. They're kind of at a weird angle and I can kind of show you what I used. Um, I use this little ball Allen tool right here, and that's what helped me out the most. They were pretty tight, so just keep that in mind that you don't want to put a whole lot of torque on these ball Allen sockets, and that's actually what helped me out the most. I did use a regular Allen to kind of break them free, and then the ball Allen to go ahead and get them out. And that's a six millimeter, and you'll get those two bolts off. You may have some residual pressure in the compressor, so just keep that in mind. So now, after that, we take our bolt off, our 16 millimeter here. You may have to just kind of work these out a little bit. They, they may come out, but just depending on what model vehicle you have, this might be a little bit closer. So you may just have to kind of play around and, and work them out. Take that one bolt out, and then it's just all gonna come up from the top. And uh, we'll be able to put uh, the new compressor on. Uh, I'm not putting a new compressor on this car. This is actually a junk car that I just used for teaching with and making videos with, so I'm not gonna replace this compressor. I'm gonna go ahead and take this compressor out and kind of show you some things with it. Uh, one more tip on this compressor. Once you get these bolts out, you have a bolt here, 16, and one down there. Uh, you're gonna run into this, this thing still being tight on here. And what I do is I normally just get a pry bar and get in here and kind of loosen these up. 
And when we go to, to, to go ahead and put these back on, I'll press these in. These are just little bushings in here that keep everything tight and keep the vibration down. So we'll push those back in either with just a, a, a soft hammer, a brass hammer or something like that, just to push these back in. And then when we tighten the bolts in, this is actually the piece right here that the bolt tightens up in and then it'll pull it back out snug with this uh, bracket down here. So sorry, my camera strap's getting in the way, guys. Um, but the alternator has kind of the same situation that you'll have to kind of push those back in before we can put this back on or it's gonna be held trying to put this back together, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, pull this out. If I can do this one-handed. All right. And this is what you get here. Let's take it over to the bench. Okay, I have the compressor on the bench. So because this compressor is bad, I'm, I'm wanting to look down in here and see if I've got a lot of debris in here. And that's pretty black. Uh, so I would recommend if you have a situation like this to go ahead and flush out the entire system, go ahead and replace the uh, receiver dryer on this system and the uh, expansion block that goes on the, here I'll show you where it's at. The expansion block back here, just there's some hex bolts to hold this on and go ahead and replace that. And then going ahead and doing a really good flush on this system and uh, that's where your uh, accumulator is. Excuse me, let me get the strap out of here. That's where your, uh, excuse me, receiver dryer is right here. And so while you have the compressor out, just go ahead and replace this as well. This acts as a, a dryer and a filter for your system. So if you have anything that's that's been spat out of this compressor, it's gonna end up here. And uh, go ahead and get all these lines off and flush them out and make sure that you don't have anything that's gonna get hung in that new compressor when we put it back on. So assembly is just the reverse of uh, disassembly. You definitely want to check and make sure you have new o-rings on all your hoses anything that you take apart like your expansion block anything like that has a new o-ring we don't want to cause any leaks on the system that would be man-made so uh, after that it's pretty much just putting everything back together and charging the system and making sure it's blowing out cold remember the specification on this is vent temperature should be about half the temperature of the ambient air so if it's 80 degrees outside you should be able to get you know, depending on humidity, about 45 to, to 40 degrees and uh, so on. So, okay, everybody, that does it for Auto Scholar with Mr. B. Remember to like the video if it taught you anything. And of course, subscribe to the channel. I'll be doing a lot more videos on this car right here in the near future. So if you have a Mark IV Jetta of any year, please give me a subscribe. I'll probably have a video that'll be very useful to you in the near future. Also, remember, all my ad revenue goes to scholarships for my students. So if you can, uh, like, subscribe, and share my channel. The more, uh, the bigger this channel gets, the more opportunity that my students have. So uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions about the work. And also tell me, if you've done this work, how easy was it? Was it difficult? Was it uh, easier than you thought? And what was your vent temperatures at the end? Give me a good degree on your vent temperatures. And we'll see you next time on Auto Scholar with Mr. B.